very long and rambling answer to a no, very simple no, question. But yeah, <laughs> no, no. Um, but I think it's a it's really a distinction that um, most people have no idea, wouldn't have no idea, no, not even really know where to start. Um, this is going to go a bit off topic, but um, would you be able to explain to us who, who don't know what string theory is, like a, like a brief a brief explanation of what is string theory? Sure. Um, it's a proposed answer to a question. So let me tell you what the question is. Um, you, this is one of my favourite topics, so you should rein me in. Nice. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> no. for too long. Um, so at the beginning of the sort of, yeah, near the beginning of the 20th century, so about 100 years ago, um, we had two major revolutions in our understanding of the real world. Um, one was relativity. Uh, this was um, most notably general relativity, which is Einstein's theory of gravity. And it describes gravity in terms of the properties that space and time can have. Um, and the sort of this gives rise, this is useful in the study of sort of black holes, big bang, cosmology, things on very large scales traditionally. Um, the other big revolution we had, which in many ways was much more profound, was quantum theory. And unlike relativity, which is really a theory of gravity and space of time, quantum theory is more a set of principles that we think all physical theories should adhere, all laws of nature should adhere to. Um, and so we have quantum theories of electricity, magnetism, the nuclear forces. Um, it's no coincidence that the sort of big technological revolution we've had over the last hundred years started about the same time we discovered quantum mm. theory. And there's a reason why we suddenly could do a lot more because we understood a heck of a lot more. Mm. Um, and so we've got quantum theories of pretty much everything we've ever seen, apart from the first thing we ever saw, which is gravity. The first force that was ever studied was gravity. And we've got Einstein's description of it in terms of space and time. Um, but we don't have a quantum theory of gravity. And there's something about the principles of quantum theory that seem to not quite sit nicely with the principles that are underlying general relativity. Mm. So the big question that I alluded to is, can we find a quantum theory of gravity? Right. And we've been looking for a little over 100 years now and we don't have a definitive um, set of principles and a mathematical structure we can point to and say that's a theory of quantum gravity or that's the theory of quantum gravity that describes our world. Um, work has been, progress has been very slow and there are a number of reasons for that. Um, one is in the past when we haven't understood how something works in nature, we go and have a look, we do experiments, like we particle colliders, we bang things together. Um, but Quantum effects are noticeable generally on very small subatomic scales. Gravitational effects are noticeable when you have things the size of planets and suns. Mm. So there are very few experiments you can point to where you could study quantum gravitational effects. Black holes may give us um, an interesting playground to do that, um, but they're not so accessible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what is string theory? Coming around to the yeah, question yeah. you actually asked. Um, string theory is... Um, it's. It, it, it's a theory, so a mathematical construction, a set of set of ideas, um, given kind of very tight mathematical expression, that it's definitely a quantum theory, and it also contains gravity. So you can see general relativity coming out of it. Um, so you say, well, why don't I? Why do I say we don't have a, a final quantum theory of gravity yet? Then, well, two reasons. Um, there's still an awful lot about string theory that we don't understand. Um, so it's definitely not in its final form. We don't understand the principles that underlie it, um, which is why, in some sense, I'm explaining what it is in terms of the question it's trying to ask, other than any kind of concrete mm -hmm. statement of what I think yeah. it is. Um, also, we don't know enough about quantum gravity to say whether there's a unique solution to the problem of what is the theory of quantum gravity? So it may be that string theory, when we've got it fully developed and we understand it as a quantum theory of gravity, it may not be the one that quite describes the world we live in. But it's the best lead we will. I would say it's the best lead we have at the moment because it clearly has the two main ingredients. Um, and it's exciting because this, these two revolutions I talked about about 100 years ago, it very much feels like they weren't isolated revolutions on their own. They were the beginnings of something much, much bigger that we're right in the middle of. And we don't know whether we're going to get to a quantum theory of gravity tomorrow. Maybe someone's mm -hmm. going to 
where I publish a paper that will explain everything, or if it'll be 200 years' time. We don't know. Interesting. So um, I still have a few questions. Like, I guess I have two questions. Um, I guess one is why is it called string theory? And another, um, I guess, like where does, where does it come from and what, what things, what constitutes it at the moment, even if it's not fully formed? You see what I mean? Sure. Okay, so they're all kind of related questions, I yeah. think. So the f first one was kind of why is it called string theory? Um, so we don't understand what the principles of a theory are and how best to think about it. Our best way of thinking about it at the moment is in terms of making a very simple kind of um, almost seems very mundane generalization of instead of thinking of the fundamental building blocks of nature as being point-like particles, mm. think of them as extended objects. So imagine a little loop. And that, that's the string that you would talk of. Mm. Um, that's probably not quite the right way to think about it in the same way that particles aren't really the right way of thinking about fundamental building blocks of nature, but they were kind of a gateway into a mm. deeper understanding. And this kind of picture of strings is probably a gateway into something. It's definitely a gateway into something much, mm. much deeper. Um, wh where it came from is sort of by accident. People weren't trying to understand quantum gravity. Um, it's sort of in the um, late 60s, early 70s, people were trying to understand the strong nuclear force. So the force that binds um, quarks together to form protons and neutrons, kind of the basic building blocks of atomic nuclei. Mm. Um, and that was a very new, new physics then. Particle accelerators weren't as sophisticated as they are now. We knew much less. Um, and it wasn't clear that whether or not the, the physics of the strong force would be similar to what we'd seen already in electricity and magnetism or required something radically different. Um, one thing was, was known is if you take two quarks, two subatomic particles, and you try and pull them together, a bit like a rubber band, the further you pull them, the harder it gets, the stronger the force pulling them together gets. So an early model that was hoping to capture some of this physics was as a little string with the quarks being an endpoint. And then if you try to pull them too far apart, the string snaps and you get two endpoints. Mm. Um, two sets of endpoints. Um, and people tried to use this to describe the strong nuclear force. And it captured some of the properties. But this annoying feature that kept on coming back is that whenever you calculated anything with it, you got gravitational answers out. right? So you try and look at um, some model, some interaction between nuclei using these things. And it would give you some answer that involved gravity. Um, and there was no way of removing gravity. And so people thought, well, this model doesn't work. And other people picked up the model and said, aha, this might be just what we're looking for. This is a quantum theory you've built, and it knows about gravity. In fact, it has to know about gravity. You can't get away from it knowing about gravity. Mm -hmm. In some sense, it sort of predicts the existence of gravity if you didn't know about it beforehand. Yeah. So we stumbled upon it completely by accident. Um, it's often described as a bit of 21st century um, physics or mathematics that fell into... The 20th century accidentally um, and one of the things that's been quite interesting about it is that um, it hasn't just had impact in theoretical physics it's also had impact in pure mathematics as well um, there have been um, links between areas of topology and geometry say that were not thought to be connected in the way they are and string theory somehow shows you that these things are two ways of looking at the same sort of thing um, so there's some very deep mathematics. It's not just we don't understand the physical principles. We, we clearly don't understand the mathematics underlying what makes this tick. So it feels a little bit like we're trying to do um, sort of Newtonian physics without the benefit of calculus. I see. So we just don't have the basic mm -hmm. tools yet. That is, yeah, that, um, yeah, that's really that's really interesting. I think it's really clear if anyone is listening as well. The um, seeing where it comes from um, in terms of the nuclear force between the the two nuclei and that and that snapping and um, yeah and I think it, there's something very genuine there's something very genuine about that origin story in that the um, the physicists do not want gravity to be there and um, and I guess um, I guess yeah but if it if and but because if they if they found that that presence it Kind of, um, I guess it's 
it makes it more believable because they actually didn't want that to be there, but that's what they um, found, if, if, you, if you see what I mean. Right, it's a slightly more pure origin, so mm. it's not loaded with an agenda or exactly. a way of someone saying, I think things should be like this. It yeah. sort of comes out of, yeah, mm. it's sort of naturally out of some structure. Yeah, and I guess it shows how collaborative um, like the world of science can be mm. when you find um, answers to your problems and completely um, unpredict like unexpected places yeah serendipity yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah nice